Welcome back to Blackstone. Last time we met two patients, and today we'll examine their treatment arrangements. First up is electroconvulsive therapy. Invented in the 1930s, the first treatment device was a modified electric kettle prod. By 1950, 175,000 patients were undergoing this therapy in the US. The mechanism is unknown, they just zap people to see if they get better. It's not a permanent cure for depression, half of the patients relapse within a year. Right, the equipment here is a custom-made machine designed by Malcolm. Part of the information on this panel is related to a puzzle, but it also says that the chair does not have arm restraints, because the convulsions would break the bones otherwise. And there is an EEG machine for keeping track of your brain waves. How nice of them. The procedure. No breakfast, conductive paste on your head, attendants grab your arms, a mouth guard is set between your teeth. And then, for some insane reason, this machine gives you a countdown to the shock. That's really, really odd. Why would you want that? Side effects? Short and long-term memory loss. Usually people recover from that, but some more complex skills can be impaired. There are records of ECT being used for punishment, but apparently Blackstone is clean in that regard. That's nice to know. But that's all theory. Let's check the room out. The basic stethoscope has changed surprisingly little through the years. It is believed that this one belonged to the superintendent himself. There's nothing like a shiny piece of cold metal on your chest, first thing in the morning. Hello! Mouth guards were provided for the comfort of the patients. My ass! They tell you it's bad. <laughs> Believe me, pal, it's worse. They'd go through two or three of those each week. Hell, they got the damn settings wrong once, and I bit clear through a brand new one myself. Leave it alone. You don't know where it's been. I do. I wonder if this really belonged to my father. Well, it doesn't talk to us, so it might be fake. They don't look like much, but they're great to hang on to when the orderlies are trying to get you in the chair. That's to catch the puke. Some guys really spew when the volts hit them. That's vinegar. They use it to clean you off before they put on the conductive jelly. It'd be too bad if a little bit of dirt meant you only got one million volts instead of two. That's conductive jelly. They smear it on your head before they attach the electrodes. Smells like crap, if you'll pardon my French. The way I figure it, they brought in an expert special, just to put the light in the exact spot to annoy you the most. Whoa, you should see this baby when it's all lit up. Lights are flashing and sirens are going. Then they send about a billion volts right through your head. After that, you don't remember much for a few days. Then. You remember too much. That's where the juice comes from. You can't see him while you're in the chair, but those are the numbers the frequency guy watches. That's the frequency machine. 
They got a guy stands there who turns the dials so they don't match the numbers behind your head. If they do match, some kind of resonance thing happens. The machine blows a gasket, and they gotta go to Boston to fix it. That's the master switch. When they throw that sucker, you got exactly 90 seconds till the end of the world. Are you nuts? Get out of here! That's the EEG machine. The doctors think it's a big deal, but the orderlies say it don't mean squat. It's the most fiendish torture device ever conceived by the mind of man. I've done the Hydra, solitary, fever therapy, the works. I'd rather do them all at the same time than sit in that chair for 10 seconds. You're not listening to me, friend. Sitting in that chair opens up the gates of hell. Those things go across your chest, not your arms, see? Because when the volts hit, you spasm so bad, your arms would break. So an orderly stands on each side. And those guys were mean bastards, too. Oh, they punch you in the gut when the doctors weren't looking. Well, look what the cat dragged in. What did you do? That's the outside. Forget the outside. The game's in here, and if you lose, you lose it all. It seems too serious for that. If you don't treat it like a game, you'll go crazy. It's all you against the system. Don't give up. Never say die. Don't you dare let the bastards win. The truth is, they're not that smart. So it's not too hard to outthink them. Except Metcalf. He's the smart one. Isn't the game rigged? They think they're holding all the cards. And they are. But that doesn't mean you can't flip over the table. <laughs> It sounds like you're proud of yourself. You're damn right I'm proud. I took every punch those turds could throw and came right back for more. They never licked Jack Kramer, and they knew it. Did they all fight back? Nah, most of them didn't have it in them. I remember one morning they found a woman in the ward, hanging with her head wedged between the transom and the door frame. They never figured out how she got there. I did it. It was an act of mercy. I wish someone had the guts to do the same for me. Her last words before I pulled away the chair, you know what they were? God bless you. Did you ever get out? You sit in that chair with the electrodes clamped to your skin. And between the shocks, there's this strange odor. And then you realize that the last smell that's in your nostrils as you die is the stink of your own flesh burning. No, I didn't win. Nobody won. I'd offer you a chair, son, but I don't think you'd want it. The name's Nick. Welcome to Fever Therapy, where you get sick to get better. Let's see how it works, shall we? The early theories on mental illness were based on the theory of four humors and the balance of fluids. 
to balance your fluids, doctors would use purgatives and bloodletting, hopefully not at the same time. But then exciting new methods were invented. Oh, and this room was also used for solitary confinement kind of treatment. Fever therapy. A doctor came up with an idea that a high fever can kill an undetermined infection that caused mental illness. After the First World War, the doctor chanced upon malaria and used it to infect some of his patients with some degree of success. That got him the 1927 Nobel Prize in Medicine. And malaria therapy ended up being standard treatment procedure for years. At least he stopped giving people typhus and tuberculosis. Insulin coma therapy. Apparently an overdose of insulin causes a coma coupled with violent convulsions. Some doctor's patients seemingly got better after that, so he tried it on others. That was the whole theory, pretty much. Naturally, failure to administer glucose in time to counter the insulin overdose was either fatal or led to brain damage. Somehow, this is far from the craziest treatment methods. Metrazole, normally a stimulant used as cuff medicine, its overdose causes violent seizures. A doctor noticed that epileptics rarely suffered from schizophrenia, so he thought seizures were the key. This method became commonplace by the 1940s, even though it was confirmed that epileptics were not in any way resistant to schizophrenia. Side effects? Uh, seizures just may break all the major bones in your body. Oh, and the cure rate was the same as for spontaneous recovery, without treatment. Blisters were used by the medical staff to evacuate the bowels of the patients. That's a polite way of saying they stuck it up your behind and squeezed. Of all the contraptions ever invented to stick inside a body, that was the most painful. If them doctors was ever to use one of them things on themselves, they would have invented something new the next day. Trust me, son. There ain't a damn thing good you can do with that. Lancets and scarificators were used to bleed the patients. It was believed that doing so would bring their bodily humors back into balance. Bull hockey! They did it to keep us weak so we couldn't fight back. Oh, they knew more ways to cut a body open than a dog has fleas. You leave those be. Enough people have been hurt with them already. <laughs> That's their version. You want to know what really happened? Talk to me. That's where they keep all the medicines. They pretended it was scientific. But me, I think it was just mix and match. I remember Dr. Metcalf used to keep some kind of key in one of them drawers. I knew it was important, so I made up a way so I wouldn't forget. But all I remember now is the name Mandy Lee. It must have meant something to me at the time, but now I forget what it was. Now don't do that, it'll take you all night to root through them drawers. Think, man, think! Mandy Lee! It must mean something! That's where they'd catch your blood when they open your vein. You got no idea what it's like to sit there and watch your blood drain out, knowing if the orderly doesn't come back in time, you'll bleed to death. That's industrial strength castor oil. One spoonful will give you the trots for a week. That's where they keep all... Take two swallows of that Ipecac, and your lunch will be on the floor in no time. Add a pull guide. It'll stop you up like a potato up your tailpipe. I don't know what's in that one, and I don't want to find out. It's called a Utica cage. They lock you in there overnight and set it so you can't unbend your legs. 
If you treated a dog like that, they'd throw you in jail. You stay away from that. That cage is real trouble. They'd strap you in that thing, lower the box over your head, and just leave you there. I'd cut a hole in the seat so you could crap. The women were lucky, they pee straight down. But the men pissed all over themselves, because they couldn't get their hands free. Now don't do that. That's not even a good joke. Howdy. Were you an inmate? Yeah, <laughs> you mean what am I in for? I'm just old is all. I forget things. My wife died, my kids didn't know what to do with me, so I ended up here. Did they know what it's like in here? Are you nuts? You think I'd tell them that? They'd done the best they could by me. They deserve to get on with their lives. Everybody's gotta die somewhere. I told them old Nick Brennan was doing fine. How did you get by? The first thing is, don't let them see you cry. They'll think you're depressed and start pouring pills down your throat faster than you can say Jack Robinson. Any other tips? Don't turn your back on that Metcalf guy. He talks civilized, but he's got a mean streak a mile wide. Did they know what they were doing? Are you kidding? They were shooting in the dark and we were the far wall. They didn't have a clue why people go haywire. Anybody got cured around here, it was because they were desperate to get away from the quacks. Nick's story sounds far too common, even for this day. Except for the fever therapy. But the guys got a Nobel Prize for that. It was a spanking new treatment procedure. We have several things to take care of in the office. Let's augment our hearing. I wonder if this really... Right, so, the photo on the desk and my notes have a date 4.24.55. Let's try to input that using a very precise and very finicky interface. Nope. You have to click sort of on the mark you want to dial to. Got it. Lucky. Now the photo says 55, but that was the third birthday, so we need 52. Watch me move in the opposite direction. No, not 47. Sorry. Twenty-three. Oliver, could you maybe use your hands to stop the dial? It seems to be exceedingly well oiled. Dad, maybe I can make it bigger. You're a good boy, Josh. I'm proud of you. It's just an ordinary box. I don't know why that woman insists on calling it a casket. It is a Fabergé egg. It looks delicate, but if you don't know the trick to opening it, it would take quite a bit of pressure to get it to crack. It 
is a Fabergé egg. Pressure, crack. Hmm. Curious. The word you seek is the thing itself. We don't seek a word yet, but good to know. It's just an ordinary. It's locked. I hope we learn about the key soon. First, Mendeley. Ah, uh, she's Nick's daughter, and he can't remember her. Senile dementia and Alzheimer's. Definitely not something that can be treated with malaria. The one code-like thing here is Riverside Apartments 3C. And now, Jack. He said he died in that chair. Escaped? A belligerent rebel who one day just failed to show up for morning rounds. And no search was initiated. Um, do you also get the feeling the official records might not be entirely honest and accurate? Also, Jack sounds like a one flew over the cuckoo's nest tribute. So we've got this 3C clue thing. That's a 3 and the third letter of the alphabet. And the draw was all in the grid. The solution is really obvious if you think about it, and both coordinates being the same makes it very easy to find the right place, no matter which way the numbers and the letters go. They all look kind of the same. You can see how I'd forget, can't you? That's it? Now I remember. How could I forget my own daughter's address? It's too small to fit on the ring. No wonder he had to hide it. I think we've got the key to the box. And if memory serves, this casket of poisons is supposed to contain Lavinia's handkerchief. It's just an old. It looks the same as all the others. So you found it at last. Better hurry and get it back to Vi before she decides she's Joan of Arc. Each of these vials contains a highly concentrated dose of a lethal biotoxin. One is snake venom. One is bubonic plague. The third is typhus and the last is malaria. Unfortunately, without the labels, it is impossible to determine which is which. I wonder which you are injecting yourself with at this very moment. I'm sure you'll know soon. The concentration is such that the symptoms appear almost instantly. And if you don't administer the correct antidote within a few hours, you will certainly die. Welp. It's beautiful work. You are a loyal friend. My thanks for returning to me that which was stolen. One of the poisons has entered my body and I need to counteract it. 
Sir George had another box in which he kept the antidotes, but alas, I, I do not know where he kept it. I have a gift for you. What is it? I have been saving a file to saw through the window bars that I might escape on the day the King of Spain sends his soldiers. Now that I can write to Elizabeth, I will no longer need it, for I know I can rely on her clemency. Take it with my blessing. When you find your son, use it to escape this foul prison. How might I find this file? It is concealed in a clever panel on my bedpost. Press the crown, and you will find it inside. Did Sir George ever speak of a special hiding place? The prisoner next door once told me she saw our jailer emerge from a false door, but I have not seen this myself. Can you tell me again where the file is hidden? Press the crown on the bedpost. The secret panel will open. Do you still feel ill? I know there are those who believe I'm not in my right mind. But my world here is what I have made it, only because the real world is so much harsher. Please do not judge me for creating the best place I can. Do you understand where you really are? I understand that I am not free. I understand I cannot walk among the flowers and trees, nor sit on the hill at sunset and wait for the stars to appear. I cannot move without people watching. When I am allowed to speak, my words are examined for hidden meanings. I understand I must obey orders and ask permission almost to breathe. All my life, I dreamed of setting aside my responsibilities, of having others make decisions for me. Now that this dream has become reality, I understand how foolish I was to give up my freedom. That's not what you'd expect from a zany delusional patient. Go on, take it. It is my gift. It still looks sharp, after all these years. You are shivering, Oliver. That must be the first symptom of the biotoxin making its appearance. Oh, crap. Yes, Oliver? What are the symptoms? First, you start to shiver or twitch, as if you had a fever. This is followed by muscular pain or cramps. Then nausea sets in, followed by general paralysis and death. What will I feel? Shivering, headaches, and dizziness are the early symptoms, followed by pain in the back or limbs. When vomiting begins and the patient begins to swell up and choke, the end is near. How will I know if that was the toxin? It starts with chills and a fever. Then comes a severe headache and generalized pain. Fatal cases degenerate quickly into delirium and coma, usually followed by cardiac arrest. What will happen to me? As you might expect, shaking and chills, followed by severe headaches. Towards the end, the patient sweats profusely, then lapses into delirium, followed by death. Yes, we'll need to find out what is killing Oliver before we can use any antidote. There. That should work. This should cut through just about anything. How about a padlock? It's a good thing Dr. Metcalf used some generic snake venom. I mean, viper venom would simply trigger a self-destruct sequence in your cells and make your living tissues decompose. Do you have a bit of a headache, Oliver? That's the second biotoxin symptom. You really should do something about that, you know. I'll carefully make a note of the symptom.
It's an old coal burner from before I was born. You'll never be master of it, lad, but if you respect it, it'll take care of you. Can I help you, lad? Not now, apparently. That was quick. I'd be stuck here all night. Those are just backups. They're not hooked up right now. Don't concern yourself with those. They control power to the gatehouse. That won't help at all. That's the master switch to the whole place. It'd kill you in a heartbeat. More likely half a heartbeat. Malcolm removed the insulation from the handle. It's sparking to beat the band. It's a wonder the thing hasn't melted with all that current running through it. Huh. I swear you have a death wish. Can you not see there's electricity flowing through there? So the problem is the lack of insulation on the vital parts of the system. And we've got no gloves, so the current would just shoot through all of it into the ground. Where can we create a point of insulation? Smart move, lad. Oops, a graphical glitch. You'll not get very far stumbling around in the dark. Leave it alone. Here goes. Very good, Oliver. Unfortunately, the locket is an item that encourages ill-advised activities. Where are you going now? The clock tower to throw yourself off? The cistern to drown yourself? I don't know why you're doing this to yourself, Oliver. It really isn't necessary, you know. So it's to be electric shock this time. Awfully dangerous, Oliver. If it doesn't kill you outright, it will probably leave you a vegetable for life. Quite painful, too. Why can't you be more reasonable and just do as I ask? Commencing countdown, Doctor. Come on now, think! 90 seconds. The minimum amount of energy necessary to trigger a convulsion is also sufficient to cause minor brain damage that results in amnesia, acute cerebral hemorrhages, and ongoing cognitive problems. Oh, this is big trouble. It is debatable whether this brain damage results from the convulsion or the passage of the electricity itself. My research suggests that electricity is the culprit, and that even subconvulsive doses cause constriction of the arteries, arterioles, and capillaries, as well as metabolic changes in the brain chemistry. One minute till shock, Doctor. I favor bilateral placement of the electrodes, which ensures that current travels a longer path through the brain and leads to convulsions of greater intensity and length. There are, however, those who believe the electrodes should be placed on the same side of the skull. Don't just sit there! 30 seconds. Electrical burns resulting from the conversion of electrical energy into heat are generally severe, destructive, and disfiguring. 20 seconds. Oh man, this is bad. Death from electrical shock usually results from ventricular fibrillation, central respiratory arrest, or asphyxia from tetanic respiratory muscle contraction. Ten seconds till shock. Damn it! You're not gonna make it! There's not enough time! Five seconds. Brace yourself! Three. Two. One. 
Here it comes! Good night.